Welcome back to Mass Effect 3 with Tristan Shepard. And there is the memorial wall, almost all filled up. I noted that in my last video, I looked it over. I forgot to include two names. There's Caden, Alenko, and Samara over on the left-hand side that I didn't list off. So we've managed to fill up this wall. Something fierce. Pretty nasty. Let's go talk to the crew. Talk to Dr. Michelle here. Hello there, Commander. How are you settling in, Doctor? Good. I've been busy restocking supplies and running diagnostics. It's nice working alone in a fresh lab. I get to set up everything just the way I want. Anyway, now that you're here, I'd like to examine you. Do you have concerns about my health? You have an extensive number of cybernetic implants. I died. Cerberus spent a fortune bringing me back. I know. I just want to make sure everything checks out. It'll take no time. It doesn't hurt to be safe. It won't hurt, will it? No, no, nothing invasive. I just need to run some implant diagnostics and take readings of your immune system. It looks like your implants have a synthetic protein overlay that's allowed your body to integrate them quite nicely. Must be from the procedure I had done to help heal my scarring. Must be. I bet that wasn't cheap. Thank you for indulging me. Everything looks fine. May I help you at all? Do we have enough medical supplies? Luckily, the med bay was one of the first areas the retrofit team stocked. That's fortunate. Who knows how long we'll have to be self-sufficient. How does working on a military vessel compare to your Citadel clinic? It's a completely different experience. I like that I have fewer patients under my care. I can really focus and get to know each person. But the workday never ends here. I don't get to go home. I'm always on call. But you're making a real difference. So by being here, I'm making a difference too. Do you have any family? My parents are on Earth. Geneva, the news isn't good. I'm sorry. But my brother is safe on the Citadel. I'll count my blessings where I can. Just let me know if you need anything. I will. Let's reset James. That's Legion's bed, man. Why'd we give that robot Legion's bed? Commander Shepard, it's a pleasure to see you again. You're the drone from the Shadow Brokers ship. Dr. Tassoni now refers to me as Glyph, instead of Info Drone, 95% of the time. If you have a moment, I'd like to draw your attention to a terminal in her office. It analyzes information packages. If you find any useful data, I can research upgrades for you. And what should I be looking for? I'll inform you if you found relevant data. When you do, return to this terminal for your choices. In the meantime, Dr. Tassoni would like to speak with you. Have a pleasant day. Meeting with the council didn't go too well, huh? It was less than ideal. Yeah, I'm shocked. At least the council can't deny the Reapers exist. But I'm not sure how much comfort that is while they bicker over which portion of the galaxy to save. I'm flattered, I think. No mention of hanging up on the council, because I'm pretty sure we didn't hang up. Uh, if I recall correctly, we did not hang up on the council at all. So no mention of that. Looks like you brought more than just that drone from your ship. A few things were necessary. I'd be a very silent shadow broker without data feeds. So you have access to your resources? What I can get. 
We'll need it to research this Prothean device. Until we understand precisely what it does, it's far too dangerous to use. Did the Protheans actually complete this weapon? You mean, will it work? They wouldn't have poured their last resources into this device if they thought otherwise. But we really need to find out just what kind of weapon they left us. We can figure out what it does later. Our priority is getting it built. Just give me some warning before you flip the switch. People were finally starting to listen before the Reapers came. If we'd had a little more time, maybe Earth wouldn't. I'm sorry. I understand if you don't want to talk about it. There's still a lot of people alive down there. I have to remember that. You will. It's the war we warned everyone about for years. And if I know you, Shepard, you'll make them proud. Really? Well, you apparently you don't know Shepard. Because <laughs> he's done a horrible job so far. This terminal contains non-essential correspondence from your allied forces. Dr. Tassoni has granted you access. All right. Thank you for the data packet. The results are I'll get around to doing that later, Glyph. Go planet scanning for some upgrades. But first, we need to talk to the crew. Oh, and I gotta get squeakers. And my models. Forgot about the models. I should have got that model that was on the second floor there. Come on, squeakers! Ah, missed. Squeakers, where are you? Come on, Squeakers. Come on, I hear you. There you are. <laughs> I got him. Yay. Okay, we've got all the models here. Oh, Ken, Gabby. Oh, Gabby especially. I like Gabby. Oh, well. Commander, welcome back to the Normandy. Or maybe you should be saying that to me. Engineer Adams, what are you doing here? I was put in charge of the drive core retrofits. My experience on the Normandy SR-1 made me an obvious choice. So, what do you think of our SR-2? She's incredible. If there's one nice thing I can say about Cerberus, it's that they know how to build a ship. And about that, Cerberus, I mean. I owe you an apology. How so? Back when you got this ship, Dr. Chalk was contacting me, asking me to help with your mission against the Collectors. I refused. I didn't have your back, and I'm sorry for that. Why didn't you join us? I saw what happened to you when the Normandy went down. I didn't trust that it was really you, and I certainly didn't trust Cerberus. Also, as an officer of the Alliance, I don't just leave my post, you know? Why is everybody kind of in soft focus here? I don't get it. Your alliance first. That's the way it should be. Thank you, Commander. Glad to be aboard. 
Besides, it's a good thing you didn't come on that mission, because if you did, you'd be dead. I can almost guarantee it. Does the new Normandy stack up to the old SR-1? <laughs> stack up? It blows the old ship away. The Tantalus drive core has been completely overhauled. The SR-2 might be nearly twice the size, but the new drive core is three times bigger. This ship can fly. That said, Cerberus isn't too high on safety. If pushed past her limits, this core would vent into engineering. Guess it gives my team incentive to keep her well balanced during a firefight. Do your job or get vaporized. Pretty much. I noticed you upgraded the kinetic barriers with cyclonic technology. Should help reduce the draw when under missile fire. Hopefully that means fewer vaporized engineers. The IES stealth system is significantly improved. It can handle a higher blue shift of our emissions. And that means? We should be able to drop out of FTL without triggering every sensor in range. Very handy for stealth reconnaissance. All in all, the Normandy is a marvel of engineering. <laughs> yes, well, it would have been nice for Kasumi if we'd installed that uh, shield technology before the suicide mission. Is your family okay? My parents are serving on Viridian Zenith, an Alliance agricultural vessel. My sister is a navigator on the SSV Benjamin Davis. Happy to report that both vessels are safely under Hackett's command. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, sir. How's your new assignment working out, Allers? Fairly normal, except for the unshackled AI, Matriarch Benezia's daughter, and the communicator that can reach Earth. The first two, I can deal with. That last one gets my attention. So what are you asking for, exactly? Anything from Earth is the lead story right now. That's not opinion, it's fact. Maybe I can pass on a few non-classified progress updates. Seriously? You just doubled my ratings. I don't need FaceTime, just a data upload. Tell people what's really happening on Earth. We need long recruiting lines on every planet after you air a story. I can do this, Commander. Remind me to tell you about the time I made an Elcor cry. No, that's okay. Besides, he probably just hacked his kinetic translators. Let's go find the models. Hey, come on. Lieutenant Steve Cortez, shuttle pilot. Got news about our supply chains, Commander. Good work, Lieutenant. What have you got? Dios! Straight to business without even a hello? You two need to chill out. So you do care, Mr. Vega? Or is that the Cerveza talking again? So what's happening with our supply chains, Lieutenant? Alliance procurement chains are in chaos, but the Citadel's economy is still running. I can network to Citadel retailers. You can view inventory and make purchases right from this console. When I network to a new store, I'll let you know. It does cost more to coordinate delivery to the Normandy, so it's cheaper to buy supplies when you're there. So you're my shuttle pilot, but you're setting up procurement chains? I wasn't assigned as Normandy's pilot. Not much need for one on a dry dock ship. I was overseeing the retrofit of the cargo hold. I'm quite familiar with the operation and maintenance of the UT-47 Kodiak and the M44 Hammerhead. In my experience, it made sense for me to take over as shuttle pilot when we left Earth. Especially given Mr. Vega's love of mid-air collisions. To save the day, pendejo! I'm also responsible for logistics, making sure the armory and shuttle are properly stocked and maintained. How long have you been with the Alliance? About ten years. I enlisted in First Fleet serving on the SSV Hawking, flying F-61 Tridents mostly. I love the Trident, and practically dances in low atmo. I spent as much time tinkering on my bird as flying her. Got a bit of a reputation. So, you can fly fighters and fix them. 
Yeah. And I got a knack for procurement, too. They were grooming me for CAG, but my skill set made me more valuable commanding a flight deck. They assigned me to the Normandy retrofit team about five months ago to oversee all cargo bay modifications. Do you maintain this armory? I share that duty with our illustrious Mr. Vega. Though I believe the only weapon he really cares to maintain is himself. You know you love the show, Esteban. <laughs> the first retrofit we did was to move the armory down from deck two. I'm not sure what Cerberus engineers were thinking. Now you get off the elevator, pick your gear, and head right into the shuttle. Just like the original Normandy. Welcome back to the Alliance, Commander. <sighs> what happened to the M44 Hammerhead? <laughs> it was sent to the tech labs for a retrofit. To afford mobility with such a small ESO core, its design sacrificed armor plating. The lab engineers are trying to improve that. After the Reaper invasion, those labs are probably just a pile of rubble. You were stationed on Earth. Do you have family there? I'm an only child. Lost my parents years ago. I had a husband back when I was stationed at Ferris Fields. The Collectors took out the whole colony. I'd rather not talk about it. Keep up the good work. Yes, Commander. I was thinking that maybe at some point I should do a gay romance with Steve. I've never done a gay romance. Uh, let's see. That looks good. It's shield regen there. What do you got here? What's this? Oh, nothing. What's that? Nah. Nah. What's this? Anything? Um... I do want to change my casual outfit to something else. No. Ick. Yeah, let's go with that. Tell you what, I don't like that. Let's go. It doesn't really make any difference one or the other. Oh well, we'll go that way. <laughs> yeah, we'll go that way. Um, hmm. Let's upgrade to Eagle. That's it for now. Go get that last model that I forgot about. There's another one in the conference room as well. know why they put closed off the windows in between Thane's room and engineering. Got a new message. I actually believe Trainer. Never did Commander. believe. Never did believe Kelly. Come on. 
Didn't need a loading screen when Morden was in here. Commander Shepard. That's my name. Or that's his name. Okay, let's hit up Joker, then we'll finish off with Trainer. Hey, Commander. You know, I had my doubts about the Council. But after years of ignoring your warnings, they're finally willing to step up and tell you they just can't help. They've spent years denying the threat. You think they'd be prepared now? I was kind of hoping that maybe they were planning in secret and just not telling you about it because, you know, Cerberus. Well, let me know if you want me to get them on the channel and then hang up on them, you know, for old time's sake. Joker, I never did hang up on them. And in fact, in your little dialogue with Liara there, you never mentioned me hanging up because I didn't hang up on them. Commander, come to check on your new recruit. Just wanted to see how you were doing. Still trying to get my bearings. When I was working on the Normandy's upgrades, I left at the end of the day. I didn't even have a toothbrush or a change of clothing until I made some emergency purchases on the Citadel. Next time you need something, just ask. We're all in this together. Oh, it, it, it's no trouble, Commander. I'm sure you have larger concerns. We can put in a requisition order. My toothbrush is a Scission Promark 4. It uses tiny mass effect fields to break up plaque and massage the gums. It costs 6,000 credits. Okay, yeah. You're on your own with that. In any event, I appreciate you giving me the chance to stay. Was there anything else? Yes, you sound just like my Inquisitor. <laughs> How'd you end up in the military anyway? My family didn't have money for university. When the Alliance saw my aptitude scores, they offered me a full scholarship. I served my required years after graduation and decided to stay. I really like the challenges of the lab. O although, I'm sure I'll grow to love frontline service as well. Where are you from originally? A colony in the Terminus systems, actually. Though I studied on Earth, at Oxford. My parents were from London. They loved Earth, but they wanted the freedom a colony life could offer. If they stayed in London, I imagine they'd be dead right now. A lot of people back on Earth are still alive, and counting on us. Quite true, Commander. You worked in Alliance R&D? Yes. You'd think quantum entanglement would make communication easy, but imagine incorporating multiple incoming sources and then networking them with extrapolations of time lag data to construct a coherent situation GUI. It's an exciting challenge. Um, for me, anyway. Carry on, Specialist. Why are you looking around this way now? Now, look at her. She got confused, her animation got confused. And now she's acting like the keyboard is on that side. Okay, trainer. Well, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go out and go do a whole bunch of planet scanning. Get some money, but m even more important than money is there's some upgrades there out there. I think there's like two upgrades I can get, and I want to get those researched before we go do anything. And then and then when we come back, we're going to be landing on Palavin and picking up Garrus. There's no way I could do a playthrough without Garrus. It's just Garrus just adds too much to Mass Effect 3. A lot of people s claim they really got to know the people in Mass Effect 2, their loyalty missions and all. But I started in Mass Effect 3, and I must say, when I got to Mass Effect 1 and 2, a lot of these characters just seem flat and uninteresting compared to the way they were in Mass Effect 3, like Garrus. He just seemed flat and uninteresting in both Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2. But Mass Effect 3, he's just like, all right, yeah, it's my bro. And even Liara seems to come alive in Mass Effect 3 as well. 
Ashley, on the other hand, Caden gets better treatment in three. Ashley, she got a lot better treatment in Mass Effect 1. She was really, she was really alive, and she kind of deadens out in Mass Effect 3, in my opinion. Caden, he's all right in both titles. He's a little bit too goody two-shoes for me, but uh, I think he got decent treatment in Mass Effect 3. But, yeah, I just couldn't imagine doing a playthrough without Garrus. All right, well, that's enough for this episode. I'm going to go off and I'm going to plant scan, and when we come back, we're going to be landing on a moon of Palavin Mene or something along those lines. Until then, have a nice day.